Let's take a look at nested cluster optimization algorithm. So the purpose of NCO algorithm is to introduce hierarchy logic into mean variance optimization algorithm and tackle instable solutions where number of columns in a covariance matrix is relatively large. So as we have discussed, Markowitz curse is something we constantly try to deal with. We have discussed how denoising, detoning, um, uh, how zero implied matrix um, are used to tackle these type of problems. But now let's do, take a look at real uh, optimization algorithms which solve this particular problem. So the algorithm is actually can be discussed in a six basic steps. So on the first step, we denoise our covariance matrix. On the second step, we choose the optimal number of clusters for uh, k-means algorithm. So one of the possible solutions is to use optimal number of clusters algorithm or specify your own. So k-means algorithm is an unsupervised um, clustering method which is used to clusterize our covariance matrix. So why it is important actually to clusterize our covariance matrix is that because uh, when we try to split our covariance matrix into various clusters and define uh, and solve mean variance optimization um, type of problem inside of these uh, clusters, we massively reduce the, the, the dimension of our, pro, uh, of our problem. So in this case, if, for example, you have a um, covariance matrix, which consists uh, of uh, 500 columns, which is a covariance matrix, for example, for S&P 500, and you, for example, split it into 20 clusters, in this case, the number of columns uh, in, in a covariance matrix for each cluster will, will be uh, 500 divided by 20. And in this case, you will have approximately 20, 25 uh, columns in each covariance matrix, which is much more easier for mean variance uh, algorithm to deal with. So mean variance algorithm works uh, pretty well with the covariance matrices, which are relatively small in number of assets. So instead of trying to apply the whole algorithm to the, to, to the B covariance matrix, we can split our covariance matrix into different clusters and optimize weights inside of each cluster. And after that, optimize weights for uh, um, each cluster level uh, as if it is a separate asset. So in this case, uh, we divide, we, we apply the, uh, I would say, pattern of divide and conquer. So how we do that, we uh, apply K means clustering algorithm. So as we have discussed, we can either use a user specified number of clusters. Actually, for example, if you know that your assets inside of your covariance matrix are ideally uh, separable by the number of, for example, industry groups, you can specify it. But if you'd like to uh, apply more quantitative approach, you can use optimal number of clusters algorithm. So after that, we cluster our correlation matrix using k-means clustering algorithm. So on the fourth step, for each cluster, we find intra-cluster intra weights by minimizing cluster volatility using mean variance optimization. So here, we apply mean variance optimization on cluster level. After that, when we have found the optimal solution for each cluster, we can actually find the um, volatility uh, and covariance of each cluster based on the optimized solution. After that, we find inter-cluster weights by minimizing the volatility between those clusters. And as a result, the individual asset weight is a multiplication of cluster weight by assets weight inside of a cluster. So uh, actually, nested cluster uh, optimization algorithm massively reduces the, dimensional, the, the dimension of problems which are uh, solved in uh, optimization problem and on the one hand, it still preserves and uses um, the power of mean variance optimization, but on the other uh, on the other way, it avoids the Markowitz curse because it just separates our pro our one big problem into a set of various small problems, uh, applies mean variance optimization to each of them, and after that, it um, uh, also. Um, finds the ways for individual assets. So let's repeat once more. First, for we 
split our correlation matrix using k-means algorithm into different clusters. After that, we find uh, the optimal minimum volatility solution for each individual cluster. Based on that, we understand the volatility and variance uh, of each uh, individual cluster. Based on that, we build a new covariance uh, matrix of, uh, so of clusters. In this case, we uh, can find the minimum um, variance solution on cluster level. And after that, we multiply the weight of cluster by the uh, uh, intra-cluster intra weights to find the individual asset weights. So let's uh, take a look at the optimal number of clusters algorithm and how it works. So uh, optimal number of clusters algorithm is also called uh, ONC algorithm, and it uses silhouette score to define optimal number of clusters in k-means algorithm. So actually, the algorithm ca can be uh, described in four uh, key steps. So on the first step, we initialize a correlation matrix and convert and convert and convert it into a distance matrix. So after that, for each number of clusters, so the algorithm starts to loop through a uh, um, possible number of clusters starting from two up till a uh, some uh, some level, uh, which is a, which is the uh, number of assets inside of our covariance matrix divided by two. So for each number in range from two uh, by the number of assets number of assets divided by two, the algorithm evaluate, evaluates clustering cl uh, quality by uh, using so-called silhouette score t value which is basically the average silhouette score divided by the standard deviation of those silhouette scores and what it does which is quite important is that it repeats these step for different initializations of k-means so uh, if you are familiar with k-means algorithms um, it sometimes is dependent on where you start, uh, what is the initial starting point of your algorithm. And sometimes your clustering can be a bit different based on where do you uh, start your, uh, your uh, centroid point. So it is a very good rule of thumb to use different uh, random states and starting points uh, to and to apply k-means clustering algorithm with different starting points and understand what is the best way to cluster that. So ONC uh, algorithm follows this guidance. So it repeats um, k-means algorithm for a specific number of clusters, but it uses different starting point initializations, finds the uh, Celiate score uh, t-value for each of those uh, for each of those um, starting points and as a result for each uh, number of clusters we have the average silhouette score t value based on a different random uh, starting point initialization and as a result we find the number of clusters with the highest silhouette score t value among all k means initializations so actually the optimal number of clusters algorithm can be uh, described in uh, the following um, diagram. So we input our correlation matrix uh, uh, raw, which after that is converted into a distance matrix here. So 4K, uh, which equals to two, we after that go um, into this block. So while the number of clusters is uh, less than N, we start initializing different um, uh, different uh, starting points for this number of clusters. After that, we find the quality score and do this uh, until we reach the um, maximum number of clusters. And after that, we return the highest quality clustering uh, value for uh, this uh, for this particular problem. So before going to the next algorithm, which is called hierarchical risk parity, let's take a look how uh, optimal number of uh, clusters algorithm and nested cluster uh, optimization are implemented in Portfolio Lab.
So here we have clustering models. So it is called a nested cluster optimization. So this is a class uh, which implements nested cluster optimization. And here we can see the, um, uh, the method which is called allocate NCO. So what it does, you, it takes your input of covariance matrix as, uh, um, uh, so, uh, so it, it takes your covariance matrix as input. It also takes mu vector as input. And as you can see, the, this is, these are the expected values of draws from the variables from the maximum sharp ratio. So if none, outputting the minimum variance portfolio. So actually in O and C, you can uh, not only try to minimize the variance, but also to maximize sharp. So if you uh, input into the allocate NCO method mu vector, it will find the maximum sharp portfolio, sharp portfolio instead of uh, minimum variance. After that, you can uh, take a look at the maximum number of clusters. So this is the allowed maximum number of clusters. So if, if none, the maximum number of clusters is taken as number of elements, which is number of assets divided by two. And in it is the number of time k-means algorithm will run with different centroid seeds, as we have previously discussed. Uh, in number of clusters, uh, optimal number of clusters algorithms. And you also need to specify asset names for a beautiful output. So as a result of this algorithm, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, generate an optimal weights of uh, using a nested cluster optimization algorithm. And there are several studies which show that the in-sample variance and out-of-sample variance difference for nested cluster optimization is much lower compared to mean variance optimization, especially for uh, problems in uh, high dimension. So now let's move into the next algorithm, which is called hierarchical risk parity, which utilizes not k-means, but rather agglomerative clustering techniques to tackle the problem of Markowitz curse.